Hello, this is NanoDano at devdungeon.com with a walkthrough of starting your own Python cookbook. If you haven't seen the video describing the cookbook method, check that out first. You can find it at devdungeon.com slash cookbook. This series of tutorials will teach you practical Python while building your own cookbook, which will help you build larger programs in the future. This first tutorial of the series will guide you through the steps of starting your cookbook and writing your first program. I will use PyCharm to edit and run code, Git for version control, and GitHub for remote repository. All of these are available at no cost. PyCharm Professional does cost money, but the Community Edition is free. The biggest difference is that you will not have access to the web development tools. You do not have to use this combination of tools, and all three are optional. You could simply use Notepad for editing and your desktop to store all your files without any version control, but I don't recommend that. You will also learn how to use the PyCharm IDE along the way. I suggest following my recommendations because it will be easier to follow along with the tutorials. First, go to github.com and log in. Register an account if you haven't done that yet. Go to github.com slash new to create a new repository. Give the repository a name and a description. Leave it as public because private repos will cost money. If you want a free private repo, you can use Atlassian's bitbucket.org or run a server of your own. Check the option to initialize this repository with a readme. This will generate a default readme that shows up when someone visits the repo. Also add a .git ignore for Python. Use the dropdown, search, and select Python. This tells our git repo we want to ignore certain files and folders that don't need to be published. For example, when running a Python script, the Python interpreter will generate a .pyc file, which is a compiled file. There's no need for that in the source code repository. You can leave the license blank or choose one of your liking. Discussing the details of the various licenses is outside of the scope of this tutorial. As the author of your code, you are free to change your license at any time, and if you choose no license, it means by default nobody should be copying your code without permission. For a cookbook like this, it's not a very big deal, but later down the road, you will want to learn more about software licensing. Now that the remote repository has been created, we want to clone the repository to our local computer. Cloning is a git action that basically makes a copy of another repo. Now open PyCharm. If you don't have it installed yet, download it from jetbrains.com slash PyCharm and install it. If it is your very first run, it will ask you for some initial configuration. I recommend leaving the key map scheme alone, but changing the IDE theme and editor colors to Darkula. These are just some preferences and you can expand the click to preview pane and see what looks different and choose one you like. When opening PyCharm, you'll be given the option to create a new project or open an existing one. There will also be an option to check out from version control. Check that one and there will be a special option for GitHub. Select that and change the auth type to password. Next, you will have to put in the path of the Git repository. You can get the path of your repository from your GitHub project page. Copy the HTTPS URL from the website and paste it into the Git repository URL field in PyCharm. Click test to make sure it works. Before cloning, you will also need to tell it where to save the local copy. Give it a parent path and the directory name and click clone. It will take a few seconds to download and then PyCharm will open your project. Now that the project is loaded, we're ready to start developing. The first time you run PyCharm, all of the panels are hidden. There's an icon in the bottom left of the application that will show all the panels when you click it. At the bottom, you will see panels for version control, Python console, terminal, to do and event log. On the left, you will see project, structure, and favorites panels. Click on the name to show or hide those panels. Expand the root folder of your project by clicking on the arrow next to the folder name in your project panel. Right click on the root folder and select new Python file. Give it the name hello underscore world. You don't need to put the extension here since it already knows it's a Python file and will add the .py extension. Click OK. It will ask you if you want to add the file to Git. You can always change this later, but we do want to add this file to Git, so click Yes. It will automatically open our new file for editing. Click inside the editor and type print, open parentheses, close parentheses. You'll notice it automatically creates a close parentheses when you create an open one to make sure that you always have a matching set of opening and closing parentheses. You can still type the closing parentheses and it will overwrite the one that is there instead of creating two of them. 
What this line does is tell Python that we want to call the built-in function named print. This function will print out words to the screen, but we haven't told it what we wanted to print yet. We wanted to print out the words, hello world. So we have to put the text we want inside the parentheses. Whenever we call a function, we pass the parameters inside the parentheses. In this case, we have one parameter, a text string. To do this, move the cursor between the parentheses and type quotation marks, hello world, quotation marks. Everything encapsulated between the quotation marks is considered a text string. Compare the code you have to what I have on screen and make sure they look the same. Next, we want to run the program and make sure it works. This cookbook will be using Python version 3. If you need to configure which Python interpreter is being used, go to File, Settings, Project, Project Interpreter. If you installed Python using the standard installer from python.org, it should find it automatically. Select the dropdown and choose the Python 3 interpreter. If you don't have Python installed yet, go download Python 3 from python.org and install it. Then restart PyCharm and come back to the interpreter settings. The Python interpreter is the program that will read our source code and translate it to machine code and then execute our instructions. Now that the interpreter is set, let's make sure our programs run. This will ensure our interpreter is set up and our code is correctly written and everything is working. Right click on some empty space in the code editor and select run hello world. A new panel will open in the bottom. This is where your program is running. Anything output from your program will be output in this panel. You should see the text hello world output in the panel. The first line you'll see is the actual command that was used to execute your program. The last line you will see is the return code. Don't worry about that for now. Every program returns a value and zero means it exited normally without any errors. Now that our program is done and we verified it works, let's commit our new file to the Git repository and then push the changes up to GitHub. Right click on the root folder in the project panel and go to git commit directory. There should already be a checkbox next to the hello world.py file because we told it to add it to the git repo earlier. There will also be an unversioned files section. These are files that have not been added to the project yet. If we expand the unversioned files, we can see they are in a .idea folder in our project. This hidden folder is created by PyCharm and stores metadata about our project and settings. They are not important to the actual source code, so let's ignore them. Right-click on the folder name, the .idea folder, and select Ignore. Choose Ignore All Files Under to ignore the entire directory and leave the rest of the boxes unchecked. Add a commit message with the description of what you are adding. This will be helpful if you ever need to look through the commit history later on. In this case, we can just add a comment that says we are adding the Hello World program. Then hover your mouse over the commit button, but choose commit and push. When you commit a change to your repository, you are only saving the changes to your local repository. You also have to push your changes up to GitHub. Next, go to your project page on GitHub and verify the new file is there. You now have the beginning of a cookbook. Next, we will go further and write more programs and learn more about Python. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and visit devdungeon.com. Thank you, and keep coding.